Welcome to Team Fowl Presents! I should have actually put that in the title, that would have been great. Uh, the, the Team Preview Precap for Realm 9B and 9C. I'm Cass Blue. And oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Nosedive. Mm -hmm. I'm just your friendly neighborhood ghost, Gengar. Yep, and uh, as, the t as my title indicated, we're all members of Team Fowl. I am in Rel 1, and Gengar is in Rel 2, and Nosedice is in... Uh, what what division are you in there again, Nosedice? Uh, Rel 9, 9B. Oh, you, you don't say. Hmm. Yeah. Ooh. We're completely unbiased and fair here. Don't yeah, you? I'll make sure I'll make sure to get my completely unbiased opinion out there. Uh, so yeah, between the three of us, I think we have a fairly wide range of different teams we're comfortable with, as long as as long as that team can foul, of course, because other teams don't exist, or at least they may as well not. Um, but uh, yeah, those they do exist. There should be things to smash. Like what are elves really? Punching bags. It's a good description. Elves are teams that haven't started playing Chaos Dwarf yet. Um, I mean, I mean, elves go to Div One to re-roll into Chaos Dwarves. Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of. Like, I mean, there's one elf team up there. <laughs> yeah, oh, the might not last very team. long. Okay, so uh, today we're going to go over each of the teams in those two divisions I just mentioned, 9B and 9C. We're also going to look at the matches for uh, week one, because we're here anyway, so we may as well. But uh, without further ado, let's get straight to the meat of this. Uh, let's look at our first team, which will be, which will be starting with 9B. And the first team on the list is, uh, somewhat ironically, late to the party. Here, and, and before before we go into the team, though, oh. just like to say that uh, 9B, make sure if you have any issues, you go talk to Ninja Pirate Assassin. He's your mm. admin. He's also the trade commissioner. So, like, you get on his good side, you might get some good deals. Be favored a little bit. Probably not, but who knows? I can tell you, those deals can really, really be nice. I mean, you can always try. Alternatively, if you get on his bad side, you probably won't get any good deals. Yeah, so make sure you mm. get your games played. Uh, so yeah, this first team, late to the party, but coached by Kawaii Leonard. Always fashionable. Always late. Kawaii, Kawaii led the basketball player. Really? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, actually, there's a basketball player called Kawaii with, with oh, like one eye, leather, which is actually a real thing. And he's, ka so he's so Kawaii that, you know, so scary. Hmm. Interesting. So, uh, looking straight at this team, here we have a pro elf team with four rerolls and an apo. Uh, no stadium enhancement, though. Slacking on the stadium <laughs> enhancement. But, uh. uh... Uh, Red Pass Funeral is already getting prepared. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he is. Uh, so, uh, what do you see when you look at this team? Four, four rerolls is... Uh, I don't know if I'd go f to four. I see Red Pass Funeral being an omen for the rest of the team. Yeah, uh, there is that. Yeah. I... No, What's but the, the real kicker here is the two god pieces, yeah. like the, the two doubles. Mm. That's what sticks out to me as well. There's not a whole lot of development on this team, but uh, I mean, half of the he's got a lot of people, guard on an and he's got team. a lot of people close to leveling up, which mm -hmm. is real nice. You can grab those in the first game, maybe. Yeah, you. I could definitely see that. Uh, a pass and I... a touchdown would level up both blitzers. While I understand why, as a coach, you might prefer to have four rerolls and be a bit more risky about it, I've done it myself for a while. I do think it might be too early to have four rerolls. Like all yeah, teams are going to be like you know lone TV. So this his team value is is currently jumping ahead of all the other teams. Yeah, so that reroll might be bloaty. 
What is also possible, though, is he might have four now, but intending to dump one later on. Uh, I could see that with a team like Pro Elves, where before you get your built-in rerolls, you might want an extra one. Yeah, that makes sense as well. But, all in all, if he keeps throwing two doubles per three level ups, it's going to be great. Uh, yep, it will. Um, it'll be like a, it'll be a lot like a high elf team in terms of team value, but it'll actually be good. Just think of all that guard. <laughs> very very fast wolves. Oh, that that would be amazing. Simply amazing. So, uh, any final thoughts? Hmm. I'm just looking at these, the names of these different players, actually. Grandpa's Funeral stands out, of course, but... Hmm. My dog is sick. Stuck in traffic. Left the oven on. Work's been crazy. Excuses for being late. That's the theme. Yep, it looks like <laughs> it. Did we let's, make... hope, let's hope he's never late for the game, though, because that would be like... Mm. Did we make plans? <laughs> but I, I forgot is the, uh, the classic excuse. Yep. Okay, I hope... Aliens, he's... man. Aliens. I hope Kaui Leonard goes far, because his, his naming sense is on point. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next team. Let's... Uh, it is the Rutherhood, coached by Galactic, a Nurgle team, joining the worship of the Holy Rot. Yeah, that sounds like Nurgle to me. Out of the bat, this team has something very, very... Nice popping uh, in the eye, and also the Steam is a still two riddle build. I think he's mm -hmm. going for his third one now, looking at his cash. Yeah, I would agree. Probably going to take his third reroll in the next game. After the next game, rather. You know, he has a block and a uh, warrior standard, mm -hmm. and an best to go, which means he has really nice ball carriers. Like, you know, it's a Nurgle team, it's going to take mm -hmm. a season or two, but it's a great start. I'm actually not sure how much I like the Agi. I mean, of course, when you roll agility on a Pestigore, you're going to take it. But I think it, I think a team might be better served to not roll it right away. Because this Pestigore, you can even see it on this team, this Pestigore is going to soak up a ton of SPP to the possible detriment of other players. Uh, um... By which I really mean other Pestigores. Yeah, I was about to say, Nurgle Warriors are just going to hit beacons, so there's, they're not, they're not going to mind. It's an awesome piece to be developing right away, though. Like, you can do so many things with it. Double heads, big hands, mm -hmm. uh, give it block, maybe dodge, give mm -hmm. it, like... You, I don't know. you get a double, you, you skip dodge, because that's the lame way to build a Pestigore, and you go for leap. So that way, on a normal, you get big hand. So you got like that big hand leaper no, no, no. jumping into after you take jumping leap, into scrum. After you take leap, the next thing you take has to be very long legs. So, yeah. so you oh, get the two plus leap. two plus leap, and you have but you have big hand because like you aren't getting leap the second level, right? You're gonna just get a normal. You get big hand. Mm -hmm. Come the third, come the third level, you, you roll grab doubles. Leap that's when you, when you roll leap. doubles, and then after that, and you after take that, very long legs. And then, bam, you have the best ball retriever in the league. Not only that, but when he has big hands and very long legs and agility four, if you really want to be cheeky, then you might actually pick up the um, level seven uh, pass block. <laughs> yeah, but first... Well, well with those uh, four skills, he could, hmm. he could just grab pass block when he's at 76 SPP. No. Uh, no, 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 because you want to take dump off that at that time just in case he gets hit. Oh, well, yeah, because he leaps in, he catches it, and then they come for the punch, and then you just toss it out. Exactly. I mean, but first you're going to roll, like, and then your legend skill will then be Nerves of Steel, because you'll roll another double. Mm -hmm. These are, these are the best uh, Nurgle skin, uh, skills out there, all the <laughs> passing exits. Yeah, Nur Nurgle is known for their passing. I thought I thought we already knew this. Well, after all, they are a nightmare to pass against. Why do you think that is? Because their it's counter passing good. game is just too good. They they dominate the passing game so much that their opponents don't want to pass it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I can't watch this. What is this? Ew. 
Okay, so any final thoughts on this team? I like the stats. It's going to be a season, but you know, mm-hmm. let them develop. It's going to be a nice yeah. team. I don't, I don't see a, Nurg- a fresh Nurgle team winning the division, but I do see them getting some good development. Yeah, working towards future seasons. It, of course, it also depends a lot on the caliber of the coach. I don't know much about Galactic. I've seen Nurgle go far, but it's certainly rare when it does. Uh, when it does really well immediately, that is. You, most of the time, Nurgle is a two or three season investment. Okay, so on that note, let's move on to the next team. Elements of Style, which is, I believe, one of the two teams who have played their game th- this week. They played it today already. And, uh, hmm. Hmm. Mistay, uh, Mistay, where's the rest of your team gone? Hello. Uh, can you, can you still hear me? Is my stream still live? Am I? Can you all hear me? <laughs> okay. Uh, my stream is... The stream is still going, but I seem to have lost my co-commentators. Uh, Can't hear us. <laughs> okay. You here now again? <laughs> Hold no, on. I, I can hear you now, so... <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, so... There are like three or four high elf teams, two wood elf teams, all in Rel Division 2, and they all kind of look like this. Like, this is how a wood elf team or an elf team is supposed to look yeah. after a few games. You don't, you don't need linemen. You just, you just hire people on for the linemen. Uh, actually, actually, this team almost literally has no linemen. There's only one lineman, and it's MNG. It's exactly how yeah. it is. You just have your healthy... Uh, positionals, which you try to keep safe, and that's it. Yeah, that's how you do it. Mm-hmm. I do see that his one war dancer d- is level three, though. So clearly, we know where most of the SPP has been going, uh, and that yeah. is onto the, on the catchers, actually. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, I mean, well, there's all three catchers. Let us also just point out for a second that this is Mysteus, like, who is known for mm-hmm. playing Reds in Division 1, who is known for having, like, no team anyway. <laughs> I mean, I may or may not have been a part of that. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not that I'm surprised to see an elf team that has no players. It's that I'm surprised to see an elf team that has no players and also has only played one regular game. Yeah. It's the like, fleet of the you, elves. Like usually, it takes a few ga- uh, half a season to reach this point. You know, um... <laughs> it's just the difference between a good elf team and a bad elf team. A good one knows how to die fast. Apparently, yeah. Other than that, though, there's one thing you can't say about uh, Messians that is he does win his matches. Mm-hmm. That's for just sure. Look at, just look at that record here: four wins, one draw, mm-hmm. unbeaten. Indeed. And uh, I'm actually quite curious how he will develop his three catchers. Clearly one of these is going to be a uh, sacker, but uh, he has he has all he has a lot of them. So there's a lot of different things he can do. Them. I think the usual is two ball hawks, two carriers. Two, the two block guys are probably going blodge step. That would make sense. Go for the easy one turn build. And the yeah. others might go Dauntless Wrestle or Dauntless Triple Tackle. And I think all you'd, jazz. you'd probably grab like Rackle on them or something. Rackle Dauntless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you have the ward answer for if you want to strip a non sure hands carrier. Pretty much like your uh, Cutter Runners. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The catchers, I... catchers, like building a sacker is usually building to uh, the same way Gutter Runners do. Mm hmm. Make, makes a lot of sense, and uh, we will. Ta- I'm sure we'll talk about this more next week. But worth mentioning is that he did start this season, Mistay, with two war dancers. Uh, he lost his other war dancer in the first game of the season, which you know, getting off to a great start on that one. Uh, it's be... like the best way to start a season. I think. I know a dead war dancer. Obvious. It's terrific, but if if anything, there wasn't enough war dancer death. 
Um, I mean, normally I would agree with you, but honestly, I got I was quite satisfied with the amount of war dance or death from the playoffs. I'm still sort of riding out on the high from that. <laughs> Someone is ranked that I deserve a jinta here. Okay then. So, uh, I think this team is probably going to do pretty well in this uh, division. It, you know, if yeah. it doesn't lose the the other half of half of it, this half team will do well if it, you know, sticks around. Hey, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, armor value that. seven is the best armor value. So, speaking of Indusens, by the way, our next team is the biggest team in the league right now. Uh, that it is. I believe it is also the other team which has played their first game of the season. World on Wall Teach. Wall Teach. Wall Street. Coached by Cunning Foxpup. Pretty has... standard lineup. Not much special here going on. He does have two MVPs and Flash Golems, which makes me wonder. <laughs> Flash Golem tax anyone? Yeah, I mean that's just asking for a flash I mean, golem to die. His right wolves, there. his wolves don't have stat ups or doubles, so like the the flesh golem tax doesn't come into pay yet. Yet being the key word. Yeah, once he gets like mighty blow or something on a werewolf, it's just straight away with at least the most developed flesh golem. Mm-hmm. And it is always the most developed flesh golem. The oh, question yeah. is, though, with like a new necromantic team in mm -hmm. a long leak rather than a short leak, do you go guard first or block on the flesh golems? I think you, you still grab block uh, first, I think. It does depend on what you're playing against, but usually block is a safer choice. Uh, so the thing that actually stands out to me here is that there are two ghouls right off the bat. That is quite unusual for necro, I've noticed. They're nice to have, but they're a little bit bloaty to have, mm. as you can see in the TV value. Yep. For sure. Like, usually I see a lot of necro coaches, they want one ghoul so that they have something to carry the ball when their werewolves aren't available. But two, the second ghoul is where it's unusual. Also, they're already sitting at like 1300 TV, but they do mm -hmm. have a bench of two deep. Uh, so that they, can they do. And you know they can what? Lots. One of these. I bl one of these is not like the others. One of these is named Helium. And Mistake had an element themed team, did he not? I think we found his war dancer. And he yep. has seen better days. He he does not he does not look as good as you'd expect a war dancer to look, is all I have to say. No, he has he's cle he's clearly let himself go. He, he he did became a little bit tougher, so we might be able to withstand the punches now. Yep, a little more armor there than just a loincloth. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, I have a final note on this team, actually, going back to the ghouls. I think what we might see here, since he's clearly building one of his ghouls into a dedicated ball carrier, I wouldn't at all be surprised if the other one turned into a sacker quite quickly. Yeah, you grab grab Rackle. Mm -hmm. The one guy is literally called Ballhander McLove. Uh, Lovewick. Like and then you have bush. Fast McDodgy guy. Yeah, he's going to be fast. Yeah. This is another team with a, re with a real good naming scheme going for it. Too bad I can't pronounce it for shit because I have a double tongue. I mean... You're you're doing about as well as I would be. So, on that note, let's move on to the next team. It is like we ha not like we have kept oh. expectations like last season. Hmm. The Hostorfs Home Wreckers, coached by Randomus Namus. Enter team motto. You need to fill out your team motto properly, at least to do. What uh, Cunning Fox Pup did, and put your contact information in there. Yeah, that's yeah, we'll like just, it. We'll if just you go if, quickly, put a motto in. If you don't know how to be cheeky, just put your contact information mm -hmm. in there. Exactly, it's actually a good place to put it. Although I do still prefer SAS. Uh, anyway, let's look at the actual team. Uh, there are. Hmm. Yep, that's. This is some pretty standard early development for Chaos Dwarfs, I think. These are like German Chaos Dwarfs by the names of things. Well, Hoth Dwarfs does sound German to me. Well, uh, 
I will just break your imagination here and tell you that it's like some sort of American German rather than real German. Okay. I did say I said it sounds like German, not that it is German. You know, take this from the guy who speaks Germanic language. <laughs> I mean, English is sort of pseudo dramatic. Uh, English is Anglicalian or something, as in language group. English, okay, English is like the bastard child of Proto Germanic and French. Yes, that's correct. So, uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, this, actually, looking at this team, uh, it is a pretty standard cast dwarf team, or early cast dwarf team. Two guard dwarfs, one carrying bull centaur, and one block centaur. But it also feels like a very, uh, it's a very safe one, I think. Except for the fouling, which is, you know, essential, but not especially safe. Uh... Usually, with Chaos Dwarves, there are like two options where you can go with. That's either like mm-hmm. going for show hands to build Centaur and dealing with Agility 2, or having a Hobgoblin fulfill that mm-hmm. role until your build Centaurs become good. But yeah, like uh, he has two guard, which means he's not alternating between guard and Mighty Blow, which is uh, pretty popular for Chaos Dwarves. I know that's what I like to do myself. He also took Sure Hands on his first level, level up on a bull, uh, which is not a wrong choice, but I know a lot of coaches who prefer to take this on their second or even third level. Yeah, uh, the thing with Chaos Dwarves is like, while I do agree that Scar is like one of the keystones of uh, the uh, Chaos Dwarf mm-hmm. blockers, when you're in an early season, like in the beginning, you just want to get Mighty Blow because mm-hmm. second skill always could be the Claw. Yeah, exactly. Like, Chaos Dwarves eventually you want f- five or six out of six Dwarves to have guard anyway. But it, it's important yeah. to have take some mighty blow early, first of all, so that you can transition cleanly into claw, and second of all, so that you just it's more important to have kill power for chaos dwarves compared to regular dwarves. And you never, never forget that while it's very nice to win this season now, you are in a long, long ride mm-hmm. with those teams like. You're in 9B and 9C right now. Take the time to develop. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's the other thing as well. You just develop faster with Mighty Blow. Yes. (laughs) Block Tackle Mighty Mm -hmm. Blow. It's a super super developing strategy. The only thing that you might get is like maybe one or two guards early on, so you don't get Mm -hmm. like, you know, red diced the whole time. But other than that, uh, going Mighty Blow early is a good idea. Uh, as I said, I per- I am personally a fan of alternating between guard and mighty blow, and I've seen a lot of other coaches say similar things. So I'm not alone when I say that. Uh, but still, this is not a bad start, especially if you're planning on transitioning into mighty blow from here. Because it is two guard, I could definitely see an argument for going, okay, I have my guard, and now I can start getting the part where I hit people really hard. For winning, this is a good strategy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, any final thoughts on this one? Uh, the Jolts. I think we have lots and lots of Jolts these days. Yeah, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, I don't think... Although we have more they... Necro, to be honest, but... <laughs> yeah. Jorfs, they're just... They're probably in it for the long haul if they're going guard first on every level up. And the Dwarf team that mm. sticks around. Anyway... Uh, the next one we're looking at, Bounce Castle Enthusiast, coached by the Bison. It's a Kislev team. I like this. I don't know how long he will like hold on with him, but I like the fact that we have Kislev now entering. Mm-hmm. So this appears to be a two blitzer, one catcher build, which I seems a little odd to me. I'm not especially familiar with Kislev. But, this, uh, is yeah. what they, this is what they would call the safest Kislev mm-hmm. build. You have not a single block piece. And unlike Chaos, which can like two dice a lot because of their strength, mm-hmm. you do not have a lot of strength, so you're going to even have to one dice a lot, and you're going mm-hmm. to have to do leaps and pluses. That requires a lot of dice. One dice is... And, you know, you need those fill rerolls. It's just mm-hmm. something you need. 
Yeah, no, four rerolls makes sense. So I suppose probably, like, I would, ex I look at this and I expect there to be two blitzers and two catchers. I would have to assume that that is not the case specifically so that they could get the fourth reroll. This is why I'm calling this the safest build. Mm -hmm. Like, you can go to blitzers, two catches, but the catches are AV7 and they die really easily. Mm -hmm. This is why I think that was, his, that was his thought process. He didn't want another AV7 piece, because you can get the four rerolls with two catchers, two blitzers. Ah. I think the first thing he's going to do now, looking at his cash bank and everything as well, is probably going to go for one or two more blitzes. Mm -hmm. Try to get those developed first, because they really need the attention. Mm -hmm. Then go for like the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. Plus, I think generally... after the blitzes, we'll oh. see a bad. Mm -hmm. Plus, generally, Kislev catchers are actually really good players so they can score like crazy and level up fast yeah they don't need a lot of love yeah like seven movement with a two plus leap and built-in dodge it has built-in dodge right no actually nope. it doesn't nope. it is dive and catch it's um, dive and catch and that's it still seven movement with a two plus leap is pretty good at scoring it's 80k the cheap mm -hmm. yeah that's actually got a runner cheap I mean, knowing that the alignments are 60k each, 80k mm -hmm. is not that much of a, you know, an improvement. Yep, you're getting a lot for it. Uh, so, in terms of level ups, there's only two on here. It is block on both of the blitzers. Uh, considering the bank, I think I would have to agree with you. Probably, probably is going to end up taking another blitzer sooner rather than later. Or possibly a bear. I mean, the fun fact about Blitzers here is that they do have armor value 8 and jump up, so if you want to be Papa Nasty, basically if you get all your Blitzers now and then give them all block, mighty blow, and piling on, you can be an Orc team without strength. Uh-huh. Yep, I could definitely see something like that. Uh... Any any final thoughts on this? Maybe advice to someone who has played more Kislev from someone who's played more Kislev than me. <laughs> uh, he has two linemen which are about to level up. Try to get the passes done so you can get uh, get them leveled up. You have a uh, edgy four piece which can always do the catches, and then get two wrestles as soon as possible because having wrestle pieces to do like mm -hmm. your you know tough plays is really useful. Mm -hmm. Well, makes sense to me. Let's move on. Our next team is Click Click Splat. Coached by Corgan, it is a Lizardman team. Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. You know, it's not the bodies hit the floor. No, it's, it's bodies. I'll just always see this body now. <laughs> okay, then. So, uh, yeah, this is a pretty standard Lizardman team. Uh, as, a, as standard, you mean that they're all going show feet? Okay, it's mostly a standard Lizardman team. Uh, catch. Actually, catch is fairly normal. Sure feet is a little less so, admittedly. Sure I, like the sure, I like the sure feet because, you know, you give mm -hmm. a lot of speed to the Lizards, which is a nice thing to have. Though personally, if it's like a skink, and if it's the first level up, I'd always still opt for diving tackle first. I I am personally in the always sidestep camp. Uh, but no, I ha catch for a first level up is not actually is actually not bad on a skink, uh, on one skink that is. It's good for the handoff game, which is mm -hmm. something they're not so good at. Exactly. Uh, having said that, I think this team is really going all in on the running. Part, considering they have taken sure feet on two on half their skinks. Uh, well, I mean the roadies and groupies running <laughs> behind Axel Rose, so. Hmm. And Aussie, like I think this is like a very weird team to have a team here called Click Click Splat. Mm hmm. Uh, I also noticed that they only have two re rolls. So it is possible that they lost a player during the devastate or er, sorry the greenhorn. Uh, although because I don't think they did too badly during the greenhorn in terms of performance. Maybe they just got like really bad winning rolls. That's always possible. Uh, 
So I expect to see the the third reroll ASAP for this team. Uh, other than that, there is one other Saurus that is almost at a level. Probably going to want to level that up ASAP. And just generally, it, this team needs to work on scoring those Saurus touchdowns, I think. Then it'll it's turn just... into a probably a really good Lizard team because all of them do. It's the same as the Nurgle in this situation. Like, let them build up a little bit, get those mm-hmm. sort of levels. The skinks are going to make sure that you win more games than lose, but, you know, mm-hmm. let the sorters develop. Yeah, or the cracks, because, you know, it's pretty much guaranteed to roll a block on the first level. And then he dies. I mean, yeah, but you still have a few games of block crocs before it inevitably dies. And then he dies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that's pretty straightforward, so let's move on to the orc team, the Mean Green Boys, coached by man who is Dan. Dan Hibiki's a legend. Hmm. So, this team has only three blitzers, but it does have four black orcs, a thrower, a troll, and a goblin. Can can I just say we found our new catch chaos warrior? The jump up black orc. <laughs> uh, I sort of like and dislike it. Like he might just be going for a full bash strategy, just like just having jump up on every black orc and blitzer, and you know you just take the double whenever you get it, even though it's if it's at a really weird and. Not so good spot. <laughs> okay, so there's nothing wrong with jump up on a black orc, but I do suggest you. I it's questionable to take it for the first level up because this is going to slow your development way down. <laughs> Since he already has jump up, just go piling on next uh, level. Forget about mighty blow. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, he does have a mighty blow blitzer though. So no, this is where you get. This is where you get doubles again, and you go diving tackle. Uh, that actually would make more sense in this situation. Yeah. I mean, the thought had occurred to me, but the problem is then that just compounds your issues of leveling up. Well, you just score touchdowns, because you, you use your thrower to pass it to the Black Orc, because <laughs> Orcs are the uh, second-best passing team behind Nurgle, as we all know. Indeed. I mean, the, the Goblin is able... To- to do some really nice catches while the throw is an expert at throwing. Yeah. When you aren't throwing the ball, you're throwing mm-hmm. people. That's how the team works. Okay, so someone mentioned shadowing in the chat, and I just want to... This is going to be my final thoughts for this team uh, right here, because I'm not going to get another opportunity for this. So shadowing is a pretty good skill, as was sort of proved by the last playoffs. Uh... By the not winner on, of the not on orcs. I don't think it's good on orcs. It's not so great on a black orc because you really shadowing the success of shadowing is based on how on how much mood you have relative to the person you are shadowing, and uh, the the cutoff point for that, the point where shadowing is really starts to be consistently worthwhile, is right around movement six, preferably movement seven, but movement six works at least for like a really bashy player. If you have a player which is like strength, 4, movement 6 or 7 or even higher, then you might want to consider shadowing if you really Mm. do not know what to give them. Yeah, like if you have a high armor player, maybe they have plus strength, maybe they have stand firm, they have something that lets them take hits, then at movement 6, shadowing as a late level up can be pretty good. Uh, If it's a... If it is a more... uh, Elfie player, then you want more movement than six. Because yeah. you, you need to compensate their, them being killable for the shadowing being more consistent. Just for the meme values, I'm going to pick this as my favorite team for now. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely invested in seeing how this team develops. I want, I want to see how the jump up Black Orc goes, just because I completely forget how the Catch Chaos, Chaos Warrior went. Uh, well, that particular player went pretty well. The, the, yeah, team, the, team, overall... the team did not go well. No. Need that, Jim. Okay. But that, 
I just I just love how he must have misclicked or something, right? Like, <laughs> like for mean, the chaos warrior. <laughs> no, that for <laughs> we're talking about Iron Master. That was definitely deliberate. But uh, anyway, let's move on. No, to no, the no, next no, no. Last, no, 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 last, no, no, no. last season oh, there was a there was right. a team in our division You're with right. the Kesh Chaos Warrior. I forgot about really, that. Really famous medics. You're right. That must have been a misclick. Yeah. But it was it was terrific. It was uh, fantastic. Okay, so anyway, the next team, it is another Chaos Dwarf team. The uh, Tanarak Tyrants, coached by Chill Melowick. It's a little less developed than the other one, is what you notice right away. You uh, mean that these uh, Bills and Dolls and Dwarfs didn't get the MVPs yet? That's the difference. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you say that, but I think it's pretty clear who was scoring the touchdowns on this team. Uh, and it was yeah. actually just no one. Either way, it'll just like the other Chaos Dwarf team, it just needs to have uh, a little bit of a uh, leeway and get its like Mighty Blow and Guard going. Once that happens, it's going to be a nice mm -hmm. time for them. Yeah, Although, like... I'd fire the hell out of that goblin. Uh, but it's the, only one, it's the only player who's actually scored a touchdown on this team. Can you really afford to fire it? Yep. <laughs> I think that's the correct way. answer. Actually, that's not true. It is one of only two players who has scored a touchdown on this team. Uh, but yeah, like it's Cast Wars. Their first looking at it right now, the first season is probably going to be a little bit slow. But by the end of the season, it's going to be a pretty scary team. All the things we said about the other Cast Wars team apply to this one as well. Uh, but it has been a ready. A pretty beefy and tough division, though, so they're going to be having a little bit of a tough time to develop, but eh, that's the things that you have just have to, like, you know, face when you're playing Chaos Dwarfs. Just punch harder. I mean, you say that, but I think that brings us to our next team, which sort of flies in the face of what you were just saying. It's Ravenpoe with the Gad Stoppers! Gad's God... Gob Stoppers, actually. Goblin Anti-Deflammation Society! We never cheat! <laughs> you say that they uh, won't be able to take punches, but this team is just going to ride out murder you. Like, we have a person who just got ride out murdered by this team right here. I may, I may have had two people left by like the, one of the last turns of the game. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I can... Well, actually, wait. One, two, three, four... There is more than four fives here. Um, where, where did all the SPP on this troll come from? Uh, no, that's just five casualties inflicted by a troll in four games. Okay. This is, this uh, is the thing, though. You don't try to do the passes and get those goblins leveled up because you don't really want them to have levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, that's actually genuinely true. Unless you have a goblin who already has something good, you don't really want to level them up. Like, you'll take the levels when you get them, but it's not something that's valuable. Unless it is a, ha, has secret weapon or it's a troll, you don't really want levels on it. And even with the secret weapons, two, two out of three, you only want specific levels. In the beginning, uh, like, Sneaky Git is a gimmicky skill, which could be fun, but actually spamming Diving Tackle, I think, is one of the, one of the most legit things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Again, sidestep is really good, just, but for goblins, because you have so many of them, diving tackle is more, uh, it's easier to, to force your opponent to dodge through it. It's also going to be super annoying, having all these, like, stunty little guys just swarm mm -hmm. up on you and just be like, ha, can't go away. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where sidestep comes in, right? So and, like, teams aren't developed yet with mm -hmm. tackle locks, so they're hard to hit away. Mm -hmm. Except for the mm. two cast dwarves and one dwarf team, anyway. Uh, <laughs> you mean just dwarves in general? I mean, I mean, yeah, there's three dwarf teams in this division. That's going to be a little rough for Ravenpoe, but I am rooting for you! Goblins forever! <laughs> we'll see how they go. There's one thing I will have to point out, though. Um, 940 TV. While he doesn't have an apothecary, and while he did go for the, like, you know, full bench of 14 guys and only two left mm -hmm. so he can get star players, 
behind Folly TV stretching it. Maybe yeah. you should try to slim down with a that, reroll or something. That is actually a little bit high. But here's the thing. He's going to lose go some goblins probably sooner rather than later. So I don't really mind it too much because it's not going to stay that high. Plus, he does have the Neville's Altar. So for a home game, he's paying 20k to get two uh, secret weapons. 30k for um, Fungus. And I think Nobla is sitting at... 80 yeah. So yeah, that's okay. Mhm. Mm it's not. It's not. Nine forty is not the end of the world for him. That's for sure. Uh, anyway, let us the, move on. The Nuffles Altar at Fair Play Field. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the next team is the Pun Animals, coached by Big Chuck. Get Otter here. It's a Dark Elf team. and uh, I think the the interesting part about this Dark Elf team is that they have 120 team value in level ups and no dodge. Well, they who, have been... Because you, you only ruled the good level ups. Yeah, he has, had some, when you have... he has had some hot dice. Yeah, he has only there's only one normal here and it's kick. Hey, did you hear the joke about the elephant? No. Nope. Never mind, it was totally irrelevant. <laughs> I uh, think I think you're a bit of a hypocrite. <laughs> oh god, no. <laughs> I'm uh, watching the stream the, now. Uh, <laughs> what did the big O player put on his resume? All of his qualifications. <laughs> god damn it. Uh, I don't think I don't think that one's actually even on here. Oh, actually, no, qualified, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So this team actually has like really good stats, but there are as a runner four blitzers, but no witch elf, and only two re rolls. Uh, since it hasn't bought, since uh, Big Chuck hasn't yet bought his third re roll, I think it's probably safe to say he's saving up for the witch elf. Uh, next. So he is gonna need to watch his TV because he's gonna inflate like a balloon his tv eh, is in fine. but at the same time it's hard to complain when you have level ups like this keep doing this and you'll be the just untouchable av8 is going to help in the bashiness of this division so you know dark souls are the good choice in this he also only went for run runner right now which is only the only av7 piece kind of annoying that your guard piece is the lowest army value in the team but other than that it looks good mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see more development on the Blitzers. I'd like to see that Witch Elf. I'd like to see the third reroll. But mostly, I think this boils down to try to watch your TV. Try not to get too bloated too quickly. Uh, and you'll probably be do well. Speaking of um, the uh, bloated level up, Rage Dwarf, the next team. Rage on! Coached by Unseen Walker. Uh, hmm. Straight off the bat, I noticed that we are missing something. Which I think is rather, you know, needed. Even though he doesn't have a debt yet on this team, so I'm surprised why he didn't go for it. But there's only one Slayer. Uh, yeah, that does seem like an odd choice. There's also only one Runner, which is less of an odd choice. Um, I also see that he's named all of his long beards Dorf, which I believe we had a discussion about recently in Rebel. Like, you're not actually supposed to do this. This is a potential handicap against you. If every player on your team has the same name, or even if a lot of them do. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and spell this out now. Uh, if you have a concede, a concede but, sorry. Wait. Well, basically, if you're doing anything that involves admin work uh, with your players, having multiple players with the same name basically disqualifies you from being able to receive that admin work. Whether that is something like getting SVP distributed on your team, or that is something like... Uh, like saving a player who you lost from an Apple bug... 
it doesn't matter. You're not getting it if you have players like this. So you be careful about doing this in the future. I think considering this is a dwarf team, they'll probably be fine. Uh, but at this, even then, as they do lose long beards, probably should replace them with ones who have different names. Ideally, I just want to say this to Unseen and Welcome, the best thing you can do with your team right now, because you are in a, um, a less than ideal situation, is whenever your players start to die, just start calling them Dwarf 1, mm-hmm. 2, 3 or something, or just like add something behind yeah. that. But yeah, it's sort of annoying because the rule has been changed at a rather late pace, but... Mm-hmm. I mean, I think this is also why the team has been allowed mm. to play yeah, in the first place. It was a last minute change. It was after the Green Horde had ended that they made that change. So it's not like this team is banned or anything. Just in the future, try to minimize the number of players who have the same name. Let's uh, hope for him he doesn't have too much people like drop on the vision then, so he has a nice division. It doesn't affect him too much. Mm-hmm. Let us I mean, he, he's also blessed with the fact that he has a strength of Blitzer. And yep. any movement up or not, so that's yep. a good thing. Both of those are really good things to have. Uh, I do wonder, though, like you said, why there's only one Troll Slayer. Troll slayer. Like, I feel like there's a story there, but I do not know what it is. Uh, no stadium enhancement anyway. I'm hoping that I get to see one on this team of all teams. Well, I don't see anything <laughs> dying, so I reckon he might have had like a strength bust or something and got fired. He he predicted the plus strength blitzer, and he didn't want to be too bloaty with that second troll slayer. <laughs> uh huh. Sure, let's go with that. Uh, anyway, last team of the division. There is one. One. We can just we can just skip it. Admin team. Uh, we just skip the last team. Yeah. So we are ready to be disappointed. Oh yeah, you're gonna be able to. This is going to be the chronicles of my failure in a uh, division. Mm-hmm. So we have a, another case left team. This one is a fresh roll. Yep. Because the Green Horn Cup didn't go so well. And uh, mm-hmm. there is no Apo. There are four rerolls, and there are two Blitzers and two Catchers. This is a very standard uh, case left lineup. And as you can see, it went for the more, a little bit risky uh, setup of having two mm-hmm. Catchers. But this does mean you can play ball. You know, you know, pick up and pass with the blitzes because four rerolls does mean you can be a little bit greedy. So you can, you know, just pick it up with the catcher, throw to the other catcher next turn, throw mm-hmm. to the other catcher, and just like keep leveling each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm definitely very excited to see what this team go does. I am hoping they try to go for some sort of record. Uh, They're gonna shoot for the uh, the perfect record of zero zero thirteen. And this is the question, uh, Nosedive. Do you have like any secret strategies with in, this team? In or? fact, it is impossible to get a per a zero zero thirteen record. You I, I have can a arrange. Bike. I can arrange with <laughs> the admin. I can arrange it. <laughs> I suppose that's yeah, no, uh, <laughs> the uh, secret strategy. Like this, these are this is gonna be a secret tip coming out that probably none of you knew to do. Okay. So this is this is how I plan to win the division with this Kislev team that's a little bit behind in development. Just roll sixes. Um, yeah, knowing you, that is a pretty solid strategy. Yeah, uh, and then, everybody who likes their players, forget about it. Everything is going to die. And I'll just and then because I'm going to be playing down TV, I'll just induce helmet a lot and just like chainsaw some teams up. I still remember how you killed my strength up berserk if I just literally rolling sixes. Yeah, I made the six plus dodge into like a a minus one foul to kill him. It was so a six on a six plus six on the armor break, a six plus six on the injury, with a six on the casualty dice with a sixes result. <laughs> like what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, for all of those nine B coaches out there listening to this, don't be fooled. By the TV 1000 team here, you will probably get nose diced. Uh, this, th- I hear this coach has played a little bit of Blood Bowl before. Just a little uh, bit. 
Uh, on, on, the, on the other hand, this team is also prone to imploding because of all the luck being used on one game rather than multiple. Yeah, it's, it's like it fluctuates. Some games it's like, oh, I pitched clear orcs. Next game, oh, goblins pitch clear me. That... You already see that coming, though, don't you? <laughs> I've already seen it coming. <laughs> I've, I've, I've experienced it once before. I'm going to have some deja vu going when uh, I match up with Raven Poe. Well, I look forward to it. Let's move on yeah. to the schedule. Yep, yeah. let's go through here nice and quickly. Uh, first of all, we have the Gad Stoppers against the admin team. I th feel safe to here, say I'm the Goblins a... will probably take that game. I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to put 100 bucks on the Goblins winning. I'm going to raise this a bit for 200 bucks. I mean, I Lots. said that the Goblins would win before either of you started, so... Okay, so it's a u unanimous decision. Fucking the goblins have made it. That's my one swear. That's my one swear. I know. No, I know rebel guidelines. I already threw my nuts long ago. <laughs> okay. So yeah. The, I... So the next. So the first real match is the Pan Animals versus the Tanarak Tyrants, which I believe it was. Elves Dark elves against, against chaos, chaos dwarves. And the elves don't have any dodge. So, you know, this is probably a pretty good game for them. The dwarves also don't have any Mighty Blow. So yeah, mm -hmm. this is an amazing game for them. I think advantage, Dark Elves. Yeah, I think the Dark Elves might win this one. And now the team without a Troll Slayer is going to face Orcs with a Troll. Uh, yeah, this on the other hand... Well, actually, not so much on the other hand. The Greenskins probably have a slight advantage against the one Troll Slayer, one Runner no guard dwarf team like dwar dwarves are really good at tv 1000 but orcs i think are probably one of the harder matchups for them before they get guard and uh this team is firmly before guard i am going to call this already out uh the mvp is going to be the goblin with two casualties three touchdowns and a send off <laughs> All that on I think the you goblin. predicted it. Yeah, and the MVP, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Uh, next up is the Lonely Shiners versus Click Click Splat. Uh, no. I'm going with Lizardman. That'd probably be the smarter, smarter go to there. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go. You know what? I'm going to go with the Lizardmen, too. I feel like they have this matchup in the bag. I'm going to go for the Dark Holes, and I actually am going to say the Kislin team, because if you actually play at Smart versus Lizards and don't give them lots and lots of blocks, there's actually a really good chance here with, like, all the diving tackles so mm. going on. Yeah, I'm gonna reiterate, I'm gonna go with the, the Lizardmen. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna change my mind here, and we're gonna go with the Lizardmen again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, late to the party versus Bounce Castle Enthusiasts. I'm, I'm going with the Pro Elves. I'm going with Bounce Castle Enthusiasts because late to the party will be late to the party. Uh, yeah, if late to the party is not in fact late, I think the Pro Elves have a small advantage in this matchup. Because uh, Pro Elves are good and this is a good looking team. Uh, who was the Bounce Castle? To ah. It's the Outlook is left team. It is. Yeah, they they also don't have any development yet, but they do have a chance to bring a chainsaw, so this could be chaotic. Uh, yeah, there's always that. I'm sure it'll be a fun game to watch. Uh, and the last team or game that hasn't been played, the Rutherhood versus the Hawsdorf's Homewreckers. Which the is... Nurgle team is going to win this solely on the fact that they have an edgy 4 piece, they have the strength advantage versus not that much card yet, and they get inducements. Yep, they are the better passing team. <laughs> they they will pass around these dwarves. And we are we all know the top three passing teams are dwarves, mm -hmm. orcs, and Nurgle. You do have to worry though, because those bull centaurs are serious interception threats. Yeah, they they do they do intercept every time you try to throw over them. Almost and really, as often really, really, as really Tomb fast. Guardians. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. 
don't mention it by the way. I had a friendly game versus a goblin team once with my Camry and um, he threw four successful bombs and out of the four of them I caught three of them with a tomb guard in midair. And then presumably exploded when you tried to throw it back. No, I successfully threw it back as well. Okay, th now that is the sort of story I like to hear. Uh, so I agree with the Nurgle, and uh, the last match has already been, has already been played, so we don't really need to guess who's going to win it. We're going to talk about that next no. week. Okay, so any any predictions on who you think is going to do well in this div? Let's say try to predict your top three and maybe see who who do you think is going to go to playoffs? Uh, well, number one, obviously, the Gads Gobstoppers. I cannot see a world where Raven Poe fails to get to playoffs two seasons in a row. It's just not happening. He's in his element. Playing goblins against teams full of tackle. <laughs> I love how you're saying this with a straight face. And any predictions for who's going to finish below below the goblins? Uh, let's see. I think one of the dwarf teams is going to come into the top three, but I'm not sure which one. And I think the pro elves are going to be in the top three as well. Ooh, interesting. I I think we're going to see Mistays win the division. Oh, I forgot Which is what Mistay's, else. damn it. Yeah, either Pro yeah. Elves or Mistay will be in the top three. I think we're going to see Mistay's win the division and take the playoff spot. And then I think we're going to see Cunning Fox Pup in second. Even though they started off the season with uh, the not-so-good game, I think they'll still do really well with a, with a quick-developing Necro team. I mean, and Necro tends that, to do they, well. They may have lost, but they still kill a War Dancer, so... Yeah, I think they're going to be really well. And then, <laughs> and then the third spot's going to be one of the chorfs. Well, I'm going to say that it's going to be completely different for my pick, except for the fact that I'm also going to take Mistay as is the obvious elephant in the room and winner here, probably. I am going to stick with my mean green boys, because, you know, gotta love the troll uh, goblin uh, chemistry. It's going to be amazing. And then I'm going to actually say that the Rotherhood is probably going to take the third place, even though they're a Nurgle team. They started off with an edgy goat. That's a great start. That is a bold prediction. Ooh. And I mean, maybe, maybe like at the halfway point of the season, we'll make like another prediction based on how it's looking. Yeah, around probably around game six or game no week six, six or week, seven. Week six or seven, yeah. So, somewhere around there. But uh, anyway, let's move on to Div 9C. I think we might need to try to speed it up just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so the yeah, video I, doesn't get too I long. Know, I, I was picking up on that myself. So worth mentioning quickly, uh, there, are th yeah. there are a couple of teams in this division which have not accepted their tickets. At least uh, one, one uh, of these so is not So we will not, not look in. at those. So we're not going to will... look at these three teams. We'll we'll look at them like next week. So sorry if you feel mm. offended. Yeah, and we don't we don't need to go over level ups for this division because uh, they're all fresh teams. Okay, so this will be a lot faster then. We just need to go over the yeah. teams and coaches, really. I, I like the teams which I'm seeing here though. Let's start. So, so the first one we have is Negative Pro and his Mystery Science Goats 3K in the not too di distant future. Now, now, Negative Pro played Goblins in one of the divisions we covered last mm -hmm. season. I'm sad that he rerolled, but I also get it somewhere because and he did he, he did all right with the Goblins too. Yeah, he actually uh... went into the devastational with the Goblins, but going did he into the devastational, do that? yeah, four games into the devastational oh. with the Goblins. I didn't know that. <laughs> that explains a lot. It did not go well. So this is a Mystery Science Theater 3000 uh, chaos team, coached by one of my favorite coaches. Uh, now, last season was ne Negative Pro's first season. He was a pretty new coach then. Now he's a little more experienced under his belt. And I think he can really... And playing a team that is not stunty, uh, shame though it is, I think he can really go far with it. 
I mean, look at all the strength on this team compared to what he's used to. I'm just wondering if this team is going to go the 10 coin murder chaos way or the uh, really famous medic crazy chaos way or the iron master lead play chaos way. Uh, I know which one I would prefer to see. But I the don't know. The crazy leap way, yeah. Yes, that's exactly. what we all want to see. <laughs> you got it in one. Huh. Okay, so. Every play is going to get leap, juggernaut, frenzy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every double is leap. It's the clear play. Mm -hmm. I will say my advice here is to don't immediately specialize something into a ball carrier. You have a lot of. You have a lot of beastmen. A 3 plus to pick up, pick up the ball is not that bad. Just keep... T don't take... Uh, you don't need to specialize right away. You can wait until you roll a double or a stat up or... Well, you will want to grab, points. like... You will want to grab a wrestle or two for your rockle ball sackers. Okay, yes, that's true. But you don't need to specialize into ball carrying right away. Yeah, the rest of them just go block, and mm -hmm. then after that, you decide what you want to do. If they roll a double or a stat up, exactly, then they'll become your carrier. Mm -hmm. The next team immediately gets my favorite vote, by the way. Nerves, coached by Dick Delaware. We've got action potential! Uh... We have undead. Everybody is going necromantic. And these guys are just being left in the shadow. Of Everybody's the going puppets. necromantic, and we have this crazy guy. It, it's just like um, that are so great at the beginning. There's mm -hmm. so much better than necromantic, well, until, until like at least DV one thousand five hundred. Plus, werewolves are literally the worst, and Rel has a huge dog problem. <clears throat> so, uh, it's just nice to see something different. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to root for the end that because they're actually also one mm -hmm. of the best teams to start out with. Even better than Wood Elves. Mm hmm And, uh, where do we think we'll see development on this? Usually for Undead, it's pretty standard. I see there's only two ghouls. We might see an extra ghoul being bought pretty quickly. Uh, the mummies are going to want to go into... I mean, they're going to want to roll doubles, really, but guard if they don't. A bit of a bold play here, but I might want to go tackle Mighty Blow first on those whites because of all the yellow teams which I've seen in the division. Uh, the mummies, of course, just go guards. Mm -hmm. not, just yep. stop this is a pretty ag agile division, so taking tackle first on at least one player is probably not a bad call. Yeah, there's also a lot of dodge going on, so mm -hmm. it's going to be a really good skill. Indeed. Uh... On that note, our next team is one of the ones who has a lot of dodge. Wood Elves United. Actually, it's just Wood United. Coached by Luke, 4444. Fresh Wood Elves. Yep. Uh, went for two rerolls instead of three, but got himself a catcher. Two rerolls, catcher, with... no tree. Standard build here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't like... I, I really don't like the way he has his catcher just in in a few linemen there. And then I the board answers are on the say... bottom. I do have yeah, to say, I don't out, like of this. I... out of personal choice, I always start with a tree because I just like having a tree. But I'm the crazy so guy like, who starts mm. with no re-roll. I do like he his already names, gets... but I don't think there's a really strong theme here. There's two. There are two different maples. One of them is one of his war dancers is Woody Woodpecker. The other one's okay, he already... lower. <laughs> right off the bat, he gets minus five nosedive points for roster organization. Like, like, why are the word answers on the bottom? Okay, Luke, so it's up to you to show us the way. Because you what, are not why, going why well. are they on the bottom? And why did he, like, did he really think of, like, this really good lineman name? He's like, oh, yeah, we got Oak Forest coming in. And then he's like, but I can name my catcher Lux Beautiful Leaf. No, no, don't you know that the new meta is leaping dirty players? Oh, actually, you know what? That's actually, a good idea. Honestly, I, you have you have one mission, goes... Nosedive. You have one mission. I have one mission. Okay. <laughs> Take dirty player on all of your players. <laughs> <laughs> and the catchers will get sneaky. Get. You're the captain of Team Fowl. You have to do it. 
Well, the catches can about, get dirty players. How about I'll get like? Hit. How about I'll get like one dirty player? Hey, how does that sound? One leap and dirty player. As long as, as it leaps on a two plus, fine. As the overlord of file, I'll just tell you: if you don't get any dirty players, I'll be highly disappointed. Like take Listen, dirty player be... on a catcher and fine. There will be a dirty player on my team by the end of the season. You hear me out. Okay, well, anyway, let's go on to the next team. We have the Fat Earthers. I've been That's an awesome this name. One. The Real Denizens Ogre Team! Went with the Five Ogre the Two five Real build. Ogre build. I mean, I'd, I'd say if you're going five, you might as well just commit to the sixth. I mean, uh, if you have six and you get no rerolls, so I can understand not wanting to commit to the six. I kind of know why you would go for five, but what I am sort of like doubtful about is the fact that he doesn't use 40k for more, you know, followers. Mm -hmm. I think he just really wants a, an apo after the first game. Uh, I think he w really wants you know, to get his third reroll as quick as possible. Because ogres, ogres are so fragile and injury prone, right? Cause, uh, I, I mean, I mean, if anything has to tell us, those snotlings will live longer than the ogres. So yeah, I mean, you, you say that, but I, we saw a lot of ogre de death last season. I mean, just know that in the rebel, which will be coming to Chaos Cup now, there is a snotling called Poop, and he's a almost forty SPP snotling, which is worth like one hundred k. Oh yeah, that guy. That's just. With a stat line of four one four. Doesn't he also have um uh diving leader? catch? Oh it's diving catch, okay. Yeah. I was thinking of a different snotling who has a leader. Okay. So yeah, uh I hope to see this team go far. Uh and... shall we move on to the next? Uh, yes, let's do that as soon as I go back to the division because I actually have press back to the Raw Dad Zydeco experience coached by none other than he was a semi finalist, right? In the uh, playoffs? Rock yep. Lobs Rock's Lobstrosity. Mm, what happened to his what happened to his team? Mm, mm, good. What <laughs> happened to his team though? He, I think, he decided to retire it. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't think but... his was one of the teams that just got destroyed. Because a few of them did, but I don't think his I think was he one was of just... them. If I remember, if I remember correctly, I think it's he just wanted to play a new team. Yeah, like this isn't a case like Squiggy where, I mean, Squiggy wanted to reroll anyway, but let's face it, he would have had to reroll any no matter what. With the state his team was in, he had a tree left, and that was it. And it was even move busted. He just had to water his bow a little bit more. Anyway, this team, it's a pretty standard human team. Ogre, four blitzers, one thrower, one catcher. Ideally, you can go for the second catcher, but you also have a bash uh, potential with mm -hmm. having one more lineman. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't hate it. Plus, you can get your reroll one turn or one game earlier, maybe if you don't. Well, I hate a little bit more the fact that he. Well, I would have used my one, so I can't say it in a swear, but he went for the coward's way and took an apothecary mm -hmm. rather than the third reroll. I would have to agree with you. I would prefer to see three rerolls and just pick up the Apo after the first game, especially with the 20k in the bank. Because you're going to be able to afford it almost certainly after the first game. Yeah, and otherwise uh, you're going to have to get 80 cakes. Where, to... Yeah, whereas this way you're most likely waiting two or three games before you can get the third reroll. And he was not going to die anyway, so you know, might as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not a lot to say for this. It's a human team, so let's move on. Uh... We have a uh, economy of scale. We're gonna win bigly and immediately. Uh, oh wait, no, actually, it was just blending in. I thought there was no cross. Okay, but, wait, wait. Uh, so is. this team is called economy of scale. We're going to win bigly, mm -hmm. and there's the American dream. This team is going to go bankrupt. Uh, well, one of the skinks is named Fraud. 
Exclamation mark. So, uh... Bailout. Rebound. Yeah, yeah, there might be a problem here. <laughs> Block Friday is a nice one. <laughs> Name game is on point here, though. And, uh, yeah, once again, this is a very standard Lizardman team. Anything else to add? <laughs> I'm surprised there is this kink called uh, Russian Spy. Uh, hmm. Give it another six months. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, either way, we have a 2 year old sort of Lizardman build. Mm. There's really nothing much to say about it. Like, it's yep. super, super basic, but mm -hmm. also super effective. Yep, like, this is how I would start a Lizardman team. I'm curious where they will go, because right now they have a huge strength advantage over the other teams, mm -hmm. so this could be a good season for them. Yep, they just need to not roll skulls. Yeah, that's for any team. Or both downs. Just be careful with the ogres, mm -hmm. they might sting. Uh, maybe a little. Next team up is Doris of Duncan, which is coached by Gherkin and is a Chaos Dwarf team. With fast legs. Uh, okay, I'm gonna be honest here. When it was in the uh, when it, when I was in like the team section of the division, there, it it looked like it said Doris of Duncan. I think that would have been a better team 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 theme there. <laughs> I think it might have been because these dwarves. I'm not sure, but I think they're standard named. Um, they they do can seem. Can a bull center be named fast legs? Is that that doesn't seem like a standard name to me? That, but that's the thing. That's in, the thing. I may just not have have sufficient ex exposure. <laughs> exposure to the chaos dwarf. I Come mean, I I have literally never used uh, standard names, so. <laughs> well, so what do we have here? We have a two team reroll, mm -hmm. another baby built with a pot again. Uh, now, this is actually a little bit more defensible, because Chaos Dwarfs actually cannot take the third reroll and also have the full roster. Uh, they would have been at uh, one at 60k, so at that point, you have it is a more even choice to just save up for the third reroll, or to just take the apple immediately. Since this is an Agility 2 team which tries to score on a Bill Centaur, I pretty much prefer to have five blockers in the third reroll, though. Hmm. I mean, there's an argument for that, to be sure, but I can definitely understand one wanting to go this way. Another reroll, basically, is the price of a Mino. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true enough. And uh, I know usually I like having four Hobgoblins anyway, so having getting that fifth or that sixth guest blocker, dwarf blocker, a game late doesn't really hurt too much usually. Uh, but yeah, still, this is a pretty standard starting. Uh, you usually still get the uh, apothecary before the next chaos blocker, just saying. I mean, sure you could. <laughs> chaos dwarfs can die. Just telling you right out there. Uh, oh no. The EV9 doesn't I, mean you're uh, impervious damage. I know all too well. <laughs> but it doesn't mean you but it doesn't mean I'm not willing to risk it. Uh so yeah, chaos dwarves. Moving on, we have Dark Elves, Rock, and Sockums, coached by Dwigs. Let's rock! I uh, went for the Witch Elves build, which yep. is something the... I prefer because I like to have mm -hmm. the surf ability. Two rerolls, very basic, not much to say. It's Dark Elves in this division, so I think they're going to go pretty good here because they have some good matchups. Mm hmm. As I... long as they don't get the Ogus game one, it's mm -hmm. going to be really fine. I predict this will be the team with the highest TV at the end of the season. That is my prediction. Uh, not necessarily the team who wins, but the one with the highest TV. <sighs> Next up is everybody's favorite. Mammals of unusual size. Moes. It's the Monazons. With uh, the standard hmm. build of four blitzes, a thrower, two catches, and four line woman. 
three rerolls and an apothecary. Cause mm -hmm. bloody Amazons. Optionally, yep. you can actually fire a catcher, get a line woman, and get another reroll, or another line woman. You could be fouling as well. Mm -hmm. Or you could fire a line woman and get another thrower. You know, just in case. Yep. That's Amazons for you, baby. Mm hmm. You get everything, you get it cheap, and early on in the division, this mm -hmm. team is probably going to be a contender because Amazons. Yep, uh, but it is Amazons luckily, in a fresh world div. And luckily, I believe there are only two dwarf teams in the division. Yeah, luckily, next season, this team probably will get murdered by the dwarves. Yep. Because everybody loves Amazons. <laughs> So uh, this is a strong contender for the winner of the division right here. But uh, moving on, we have all, all Orc No Play, coached by Fug Fugu. We never get to play! And you take a <laughs> guess at what, what team this is. Um, <laughs> this person did get a memo of not naming his teams the same thing, so he just added more question marks. Uh, and exclamation marks. You know what? They're technically named different things. So it's okay. Uh, this qualifies. This works. Uh, what happened to the Orc Orc Orc? Uh, uh, I mean, we have Orcs. We have Orc Orcs. Hmm. We have Orc 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 Orcs. But we don't have Orc Orcs. Maybe it's like... Hmm... Maybe, like, they Plot used to have twist. a thrower. The goblin is an orc, orc, orc. No, the goblin is clearly a goblin, though. Maybe it's a troll. No, the thing which uh, is not standardized about this complete orc build is that he did not go for a thrower. That's the only difference here, mm -hmm. basically. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, he, he went with three linemen instead of a thrower. He, and he decided he... to pass up on the best thrower in the game, though. Like everybody knows that the uh, throwers in the RDL immediately first level up always get a strength up. Yep, it is a an established yeah. fact. Like, it's it... not even a joke; it's actually a thing. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. It's like the werewolves. Orc throwers always get a stat up, and the price they have to pay are black orcs <laughs> instead of flesh golds. Yeah, but you get more black orcs, so it, it, it's not quite as bad. You can pay a lot more. Mm. Also, black orcs are cheaper. That's a good point. Okay. And the last team we will be looking at is Dauntless Unicorns, coached by Corpax. No, 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 no. This is... Wait. Yeah, this is the last team. Sorry, I was a little bit... Um... <laughs> Hoping that Fat Bye Week actually was a team. <laughs> I know, right? But no, it's it's Gerber. No, it's Biscado. It, was it really? Oh. It's Gerber in the other division. Yep. Uh, so spe the speaking was... of actually, we didn't mention the uh, admin for uh, this division. Oh, yeah. The admin for this division is Mustaze. If you have any... Uh, Issues, go take it up with him. Make sure he's real busy with admin work. He'll be yeah. handling buys, rollover, all of that. Uh, He'll make sure you guys play your games. <laughs> Mistay is notably in 9B, so, you know, I'm sure Nose Dice, not at all incentivized to keep him busy. Uh... <laughs> yeah, just keep him busy, you know. Which is uh, fouling dirty players, mm. which do like three uh, somersaults into a stomp. Uh, so, uh, anyway. For the Dauntless Unicorns, this is following the pattern, looking like a pretty standard pro of team to me. Three rerolls, re two blitzers, two catchers, and a thrower. I can't really add more on this. Like, this is just pro elves at its finest. Mm hmm. At TV 1000. <laughs> yep. maybe, not quite, sure. maybe not quite their finest, but well, well on their way to it. You can maybe opt for, like, you know, four catches and no blitzes. But then you are not taking two arm value eight pieces, which is really something you want here. Also, you gotta have that, that sidestep block. 
I just like the fact that those blitzes can get botch sidestep and even botch sidestep fent at level 2 or 3, mm -hmm. which is amazing. It is pretty nice. Combine that with the guards and the diving tackle. Mm -hmm. It's just really annoying and really amazing. Okay then. Uh, on that note, let's take a quick look at the matches for the first week. And then we will be done until around this time next week, when hopefully Nose Dice will be recording instead of me. Um, yeah. So. Well. That sounds very. The, um... the Amazons have a bye week. So, uh, once again, like the goblins before them, I think they have a pretty good chance of winning. It's all that dodge, you know? Uh, um, no, uh, I think we also forgot something, by the way, but we'll oh, do it we? after this, the schedule. We still have to pick our winners, but... Uh, uh. Yeah, so the first real game is between the, the Dark Elves and the Orcs. Mm -hmm. I actually feel the Orcs can win that one before the Dark Elves get dodge. Uh, uh, hmm... I am going to give this game a 50-50, actually, because both Elves and Orcs could do well here. The Orcs have the reroll advantage and the badge advantage, while the Elves I... have the um, basically scoring and dodging advantage. So all yeah, I think, I think Orc Orc double exclamation mark will be the star <laughs> of the game. <laughs> I think it all comes down to the one dice. I'm going to go with Nose Dice on this and give a slight advantage to the Orcs. I'm just going to keep it in the middle. Uh, yeah. Next one is Dorfs of Duncan versus Dauntless Unicorns, which is the pro elves, elves against... You know what? In this one, I feel like the pro elves might take it. Uh, yeah, that's, that is my inclination. They don't really have tackle, they don't really have dodge to worry about tackle. I mean, they have a little bit, but not that much. And, it's, it's uh, they can definitely run elves. circles around the cast dwarf blockers. I hope that the dwarves have amazing armor dice and just mm. completely destroy the pro elves and just, like, get the win, but realistically, I think the elves are going to win with mm -hmm. the bloody pinky on the form. Okay, so the next two games are both admin games right now. Uh, one of them is Economy of Scale, and one of them is Crowd. I believe, is I believe there are teams that just haven't mm. accepted their tickets yet. That will be yeah. slotting yeah. in. I'm, I, think, I, I think... am certain that one of these is a player who is going to slot in, but I think one of the players I believe... did drop at the last minute. So yeah. one of these might stay as a bye week, but one of them will have a player slot in, and I do not know which is which. The economy of scale already starts with a bye week. Bloody inflated in commonies. <laughs> but then the next real game is between the Chaos and the Ogres. Yeah, this is a matchup that Negative Pro will be familiar with. Uh, <laughs> but it's I... also hell to start with, like, even though your Chaos would aviate, which is, I think, the mm. best team to, you know, have against starting Ogre team, it's still five mighty blows right at the box. Have fun. Yeah, like... I, d I don't want to ever bet against the Stunty team, but I don't know. I think Negative Pro might have this. You know what? I think if if the Ogres don't bonehead every turn, they could win this. Yeah, I, 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 I also I think, think it still will slightly favor the Chaos. Actually, I think it might be a draw, actually. I think the, like I said, the five Mighty Blow are going to be a huge factor, and the Ogres are actually going to win calls of it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to predict a draw. Like a 1-1 a one, uh, one or a 0-0 zero, zero draw. You know what? A draw actually seems like a safe bet here. I'm going to go yeah. with you on that. Uh, and last of all, we have Wood Elves. Rather, just Wood United. I, I'm always adding the Elf in there. Uh, I sense something that's going to become a recurring pattern. Uh, versus Nerves. I, I think the Wood Elves have that one. They got Wood. Uh, they're going to uh, so see what... No, no. <laughs> definitely not. I think uh, the Undead are going to have it simply because of the fact that they have two Mighty Blow at the bottom of the box. And zombies to fall. Like, if this player knows his positioning, statistically, he should win this. Hmm. I mean, the Wood United has a lot of faith in Lux Beautiful Leaf. <laughs> seeing as 
that catcher is in the middle of all the linemen, the leader, leader of the people. I think I think Lux has got this. Yeah, I agree with Gengar on this one. Against almost any other team, I would say the Widows have the advantage. But in this specific matchup, I would have to give it to the Undead. Just such a good start, and they do not have a tree. So it's mm -hmm. not like they can fight those mummies. Yeah, that's a big part of it, actually. If they, had, if they had the tree, this would be a much easier matchup. Uh, this so, will be interesting. Now we get to pick winners. Okay, so we'll do we'll do top three again, and predict who you think is going to win playoffs. Go to the playoffs at least. Well, that's the top three fall. So mm. yes, <laughs> I'm gonna... I'll start this. Okay, I'll start no, this time ahead. around because you did. I'm going to go for number one undead. Number mm -hmm. two, I guess I'm going to have to say Crowells, even though I don't want to. And number three, just because I want to see him actually succeed, I'm going to give it to Negative Throw and his Chaos. You know what? I am going to call number one is going to be the Pro Elves. That's my prediction, just based on the race. I think number two is going to be Rock Lobstrosity and his humans. Because he has proven he can do well in Fresh Roll Divisions. That's a good point. And then number three, I want to say the Amazons because they're the safe bet. But I'm calling the Ogres number three. No love for the Amazons. No love for the Amazons. They can have, a, they can have chorfs every week for all I care. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to have to say the Amazons are going to take... Mm, I'm going to say Amazons are going to take second. And the third place team is going to be the... Yeah. Your uh, foul rig rig needs to... I can't even say this word. Damn it. Hmm? My what uh, just go on. Go on. Yeah. No, second place is going to be Amazons. And third place, I think, are going to be the Ogres. They're going to do really well, but I don't think they'll quite get to the first place position in this division. Two mi they'll win the Stunty Cup, though. Uh, yeah, okay. This is what I was going to say. By saying that the Amazons are going to be number one Chaos Subaru, your foul res 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 resignation letter is lying on my desk. Yeah, I did not say they were going to be number one. I said they're going to be number two. Oh, okay. Uh, because number one is going to be Mystery Science Goats 3000! <laughs> Negative Pro is going to do it! I'm calling it now! I'm going to do a Sage. He can go the distance! <laughs> Remem no, I do want to have remember nice though when Sage problem. did when Sage did the one season chaos, he did not have Amazons or Ogres to play against. Or pros for that matter. I think that it was a very bash division where he did it, but like there were a few bye weeks that helped. Well, there's a few bye weeks here, so you know maybe it'll help as well. <laughs> Either way, he did start with Mighty Blow, and I think that's also the strategy here. Get some Tackle, get some Mighty Blow, and start hitting things. Basically, just study intently everything that Sage did for his one season wonder uh, win. And then do that, and then you're, you'll be golden. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, um, yeah, just do what Sage did, you'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, you, you can't tell me that that is not sound advice. And with that, though, we are done both divisions mm -hmm. in an hour and 42 minutes. Actually, only an hour and a half. I have the record uh, timer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, we still have to do one more thing before oh. you finish this, by the mm -hmm. way. We said who we were, but we haven't gave us a small introduction of actually who we are. Like, people who, like, seen as cast already probably know, but there are a lot of new coaches in this list, so maybe a small introduction might be in order. Didn't we do that? I thought I did that. I'm no, pretty you just sure. said, like, you just maybe. like, I am K. Subalu, I am Rel 1. That's basically what you said. Maybe we'll okay, say like when we joined fair. Rebel, when we started playing Blood Bowl, that stuff. Races we're good with. 
okay, little introduction. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, take it away. Okay, so I'll start with this then, because I actually came up with the idea. I am Gengar, I am the guy who has the highest armor break amount and expulsion amount in the Rebel. I'm probably the deadliest coach around, and also the most fun coach. Everybody loves me. <clears throat> and I am known to, of course, play every team which can hurt you in the best ways, which is bash, 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 and bash. I do not know what an elf is, and I do not know what a ret are, but I do know that they give a lot of SPP. Okay, I'm Kaz. Oh. Oh. One more thing, I'm also in Rel Division 2 for second season in a row, and I, I have won the Chaos Cup before. Mm -hmm. I mean the Cripple Cup, not the Chaos Cup. The Chaos Cup I'm going to win next week. Yeah, I've, I've already won the that one. So uh, anyway, I'm Chaos Blue. I've been in in Re Rebel for about a year. I've been playing Blood Bowl for about two or three years, somewhere in that range. Uh, Same here, but I, I play a lot for two years. I play a lot of Bash teams, and I am the resident stunty enthusiast. I have won two out of three of the day one day tournament Lizard Cups. Still haven't gotten that elusive uh cripple cup when i keep i'm doing you see it's because i'm doing too well in cripple cup i keep going to the winners so i'm not winning the losers <laughs> Still, i think i think you do have the title of king of the losers right now when it comes to one day tournament loser cups and no one can take it away from me <laughs> do they want to though uh anyway <laughs> Uh, as I said at the start, I'm in Rel 1, playing a dwarf team currently, uh, which I believe has, um, if, G if Gengar has the most removals, then I am, well, I don't have that many removals, but what I do have is expulsions. With my dwarf team, I have managed to hit, like, I want to say I have the third most expulsions in, in all of Rel for certain. In Rebel overall, maybe I'm fifth. Which doesn't sound like that much, but you need to consider. I'm not talking like goblins or Kemri. I'm talking dwarves here. <laughs> All this is to say, I am well positioned on Team Fowler. Okay, Nose, take it away. Oh, and uh, I'm Nose Dive. I uh, you may you may hear thrown around the Rebel Discord. The term nose dice. I am I'm well known for just rolling sixes and pows and just winning games through pure luck. But I'm, I tell you, I'm I'm not that bad of a coach. I was uh, I started out in Rebel in season four, which I think was about a year and a half ago. I'd say I've been playing Blood Bowl for about two and a half years. I started out in Div two back when it was a fresh roll div. And then I finished second place and moved on to Div 1, where I stayed for three seasons. And then I re-rolled out of my own choice into uh, some Kislev. Also, and I, to note that not, I think, not previous season, but the season before that, you survived Division 1 with three rats. Mm -hmm. I had, I, I, for one game, I had nine journeymen. If I recall correctly, so that was okay. fun. Oh, and I'm uh, I really like playing Skaven, uh, <laughs> Chaos, and Orcs. Mutation things. Yep. Okay. And uh, to wrap this up, here's one little final tidbit to give you an idea of each of our play styles. Uh, Gengar is the sort of player who will take sneaky get on a double. Uh. Nose Dice is the sort of player who will take uh, sh Sure Hands and Agi up on a Rat Ogre, and also have a Rat Ogre. And I'm the sort of player who will play a Rookie Goblin team in a division with a bunch of TB2000 teams. And that pretty that's much a, sums that, us all up. <laughs> that's what I forgot. I forgot to bring up Jerry. Jeez. <laughs> My rattle really scored 11 touchdowns. 11 touchdowns for you guys. That <laughs> yeah, wanted to know good, who in the All Stars was amazing in the first game, and then when it mm -hmm. really came down to the end, he clutched. He choked, yeah. I mean. Yeah. 
And on that note, I think we will stop off here. We will be back around the same time next week with a shorter recap of the first week of games and a individual uh, in-depth look at just two or three teams per division. Uh, until then, this once again has been Fowl Crew, and have an excellent day, night, or evening. Bye! See ya. And make sure to get all your qualifications in. <laughs> God, <that's- laughs>